Hello everyone, this is Shadow Mario 41. This is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is the most annoying side quest in the game. This is the Hidden Village Cat side quest for a piece of heart. I personally don't like this, and I do have to apologize in advance because this episode is actually being voiced over uh, in post commentary. It's, I'm explicitly watching myself play this game and voicing over it after the fact because, quite frankly, it was impossible. Well, not impossible, but really, really difficult to do all the stuff in this video while talking at the same time and making it time efficient too that was another thing i could have done live commentary in you know uh with the content of this video but it probably would have ran on forever and it's already probably the longest episode in this let's play so or it's definitely the longest episode so far probably will be the longest episode too so anyway this is the cat side quest that i've been mentioning so much how much i hate it and i do hate it even though i am more of a cat person i do have two cats at home they are amazing i do love cats but in this game cats are annoying because what you have to do in this side quest although it does parody the intro for when you first enter hidden village it's just pretty cool you actually have to find and talk to 20 cats that are just lazing around in this hidden village somewhere in random locations well not random but it gets really, really difficult to do because you have to talk to each one, like I said, and if you talk to the same one multiple times, it, nothing happens. So you have to find 20 distinct cats. And I believe there's only like three or four color schemes of cats. So a lot of them look the same, and it's very, very easy to mix them up and confuse them and lost, uh, lose track, rather, of cats that you've already talked to and cats that you haven't seen yet and it, it gets to be a real pain it might look easy in the playback you're just like oh you're just wandering around talking to cats what's so hard about that but you know, there's one back here this one's tr tricky to find but it does get really confusing because they sometimes follow you and shuffle positions and it's kind of a mess uh one good strategy that i had or the strategy that i did when i did this was um Go for all the cats on the bottom first, on the floor, except for the ones near Impa's house. There's three near Impa's house that are always there, and they're the easiest three to get. I'd leave those for last. And then, finally, once you're done with all those, go for the ones in the buildings. I think that sort of gets things in order, but it still makes it difficult. There's two up here. See, they look almost identical. That would be really, really tricky. You'd think it's the same cat twice, but it's not. Uh, another thing is you do have to transform back and forth from human to wolf form to actually complete this because you need to claw shot up to here where there's a cat. So that can be pretty tricky if you don't know to do that. And let's see, finally, oh, there was one suggestion that was brought up in the comment section in the last video, which I actually think is pretty awesome. Uh, if you want, if you're really, really having trouble with this, you can pick up a cat that you've already talked to as human link and drop it back where the howling stone is. So that would actually prevent it from following you and just trap it in that one little area. Uh, that way, you know, you can ditch all the cats that you've already talked to and only the cats that you haven't talked to remain in the actual hidden village. So I think that's a pretty cool idea if you're up for it. I mean, it is time consuming, but that's only if you're having real trouble with it. But whatever. It's not that bad. Look, I like how the wolf towers over some of these cats. It looks a little creepy sometimes. The big wolf and must have a massive inferiority complex but uh yeah anyway the point is that this side quest has amazing music it's really not that bad but it just gets really annoyingly difficult it's difficult for an annoying reason there's another cat what are we up to 14 14 cats almost done it's yeah it's difficult for a really annoying reason uh it's not like a platforming level is difficult because it has tough jumps it has tough enemies whatever this is difficult because it just seems unnecessary and you don't really care about all these cats and you just kind of want the side quest to end and you just end up rushing and losing your patience so that's why it's difficult it's difficult for all the normal ones Anyway, there's another one up here. Or I think another two up here. I think these will be the last two before we get the three near Impa's house. Like I said, we, I always save those for last because those are the three easiest, easiest ones to get. Because they're all just chilling out there. This is, what number? 16, yep. So there's one more up here somewhere, and then the last three are over near Impa's house. I have you now. <laughs> That's, isn't that creepy? It's just a big wolf. And these little cats. I don't know why the cats don't run away from the wolf, personally, but whatever. Some brave cats. Well, I guess they were here when all those orcish imp things were here, so, or boat goblins. I know what they are. I know they're not really 
are whatever. Actually, no, they're they're uh, bulblins, aren't they? Whatever they are, it doesn't matter. All those monsters were here, and that's it. That's the 20th cat, so we can now talk to the cuckoo leader. I hope you, if you are having trouble with this, you can use this video as a guide, of course. All the cats aren't in the same exact locations, but they are relatively in the same location. Because, as you've noticed, some of them have been moving around, some of them have been walking. But most of them do sit in the same spot, so you can actually probably use this as a guide and hopefully you will succeed in this annoying mini game that really has no relevance to the story or anything at all <laughs> see it's not like the the canoe mini game i don't like either but because i'm bad at it but at least it has some relevance like there was a reason why you couldn't canoe down there but there's our piece of heart for completing this uh the claw shot mini game remember we played that that was fun it has no relevance but it's fun it's not annoying where you have to look for cats Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm done with it, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Let's actually progress the plot a little bit with more cats in here. Why are there more cats? If we show uh, Impa's the Sky Book, uh, or the Dominion Rod, rather, that's <laughs> kind of spoiled what she's going to give us, but whatever. Remember, the Dominion Rod still doesn't have power, and uh, Ilya mentioned something about this old lady, and she might know how to fix the rod, blah, blah, blah. So, not surprisingly, I kind of gave it away. She's going to give us the ancient sky look. My bad on that. And we actually have to find someone who can read sky language to translate this book for us and say what's inside of it. And the only person I know that can read this sky language, besides this old woman who apparently can't remember it or something stupid, is uh, Shad who I believe is now chilling in Kakariko Village. You can go to Telma's bar and find out that information too, but just to save some time, that's where he is. Anyway, it's time now for another annoying side quest in the game. I'm now gonna tackle the Golden Bug side quest that I've been putting off for God knows how long. <laughs> I really didn't wanna do the Golden Bug side quest. I really couldn't do it until after the Temple of Time, but and now that I have the horse call, I figure now would be a very appropriate time to do it, a very easy time to do it, because you do have to travel around quite a bit, and the horse call makes it significantly easier to do that. But whatever the case may be, let's start hunting for some golden bugs. We're going to start in Kakariko Gorge as we warp out, and let's begin. All right, our first golden bug is right over here in Hyrule Field. You can see on the mini-map all my approximate locations. <clears throat> There's this group of trees down here. And if you walk over here, you hear some jingling, and there's our first golden bug, a male beetle. Now, for the female beetle, you'll see I'll be doing this sort of male-female of each pair as you go along. And really no particular order, but I guess sort of the order you can obtain them. Whatever. Uh, the female one is actually way over here. If you cross that bridge and then follow the lake, you find this cliff with two trees on it. Two trees that you can't get up to. Uh, and you'll find that there's a golden bug up there. If you use the Gale Boomerang, you can actually knock the bug down and have it travel with the boomerang. And then catch it as it tries to help, tries to fly away helplessly. Pathetic. The third golden bug that I've gotten is actually in, in uh, Kakariko Village. It's hidden in one of the houses. That's kind of cool. Uh, one of these houses that would otherwise serve absolutely no purpose actually has a golden bug inside of it. So I think that's pretty cool. Pretty good use of you know, random NPC houses, when, or in this case, just random empty houses, but I like that anyway. And if you notice, I actually did already get the male ant. The male ant is in Kakriko Graveyard, and it's really, really easy to find. It's right up near the crawl space where you enter uh, to get, to meet with Rawls to get the earrings on. It's really, you really can't miss it. <laughs> so now let's transform back into a human and find this hidden bug, which is right here on the Bridge of Elden, literally just sitting on the side. You can use either the Gale Boomerang or the Claw Shot to knock it down. And there you go. The next one is right over here. Remember I did this little side dungeon over here? You can go up there. And there's an area that looks like the Goron Mines up there. Well, there's actually a Golden Bug chilling up there, too. And again, if you use the Gale Boomerang to knock it down, you can pick him up. And it's a, pl a whatever that is. Plasmid? Phasmid? Doesn't matter. This one's tricky. I hate getting these. The grasshoppers are in this region of Hyrule Field, you can see on the mini-map. That one's chilling near the brown brown patch right after you walk out of Kakariko Village towards the field. This one's chilling just in this general area. You kind of have to get lucky and just wander around so you see it hopping around up in the northeast part of that high, part of Hyrule Field there. This one's right near Kakariko Gorge Bridge. It's the pill bug, I believe. Literally right next to the bridge, not hard to miss. Alright, yeah, 
Not hard to miss. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, this one is chilling by the trees uh, near the Kakariko Gorge Bridge. I believe if you cross the bridge and then take a left, at least in the Wii version, you'll find it. And that stupid thing had no chance. Uh, this is an area we actually haven't seen very much. This is the road that connects uh, the eastern or eastern Hyrule Field to southern Hyrule Field, where the Great Bridge is, where we fought King Bulblin for the second time. We really don't go on here very much. There really isn't a reason to once you can warp around, except for these golden bugs. There's one golden bug just chilling over here. Uh, you'll have to probably go at night to see it. I would definitely recommend that. It is way easier to hunt for bugs at night, even though you do get enemies that are kind of annoying. And then this one is on the Great Bridge. Uh, it's up near that side, and you can just wait for him, for that little bug to fly around and snatch it out of the air. There we go, making progress. That's the Mantis, making progress. This one we've probably passed by a thousand times. It's in Eastern Hyrule Field. The easiest, in my opinion, golden bug to find is just in this flower patch over here flying around. What is it? It is the butterfly. Nice. Another one right over here, right next to the, usually the females and males, if you haven't noticed, are in very close proximity to each other. So that's one good thing. Uh, this one is right up here. You need the claw shot to get up here, or you can actually use the Gale Boomerang to knock this guy down, but it's easier to just wait till you have the claw shot. Black grab the butterfly. This one is annoying because there's usually enemies all around this area, but look at that stylish sword, by the way. I love it. And it's chilling right on that tree. You just gotta slowly walk over to it and use the claw shot or roll into the tree to knock it down. I think I'm gonna roll into the tree. At least attempt to and fail. So I think he flew off with all these stupid annoying birds attacking me. Yeah, it's flying around, flying around. He'll always be somewhere either on that tree or around this tree. Right over here. It's right when you enter Northern Hyrule Field from Eastern Hyrule Field. Very easy to get. I don't know why I'm making such a big fuss over this one. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. This one is really annoying. I would definitely recommend going at night to find this one, even though it's daytime. Uh, it's right near this entrance to the cavern where we had to push all those ice blocks up in Northern Hyrule Field. It's on the wall usually, but sometimes it'll be flying around and it's hard to spot in daytime. Definitely recommend hunting for that one at night, but there you go. All right, this is in the Hyrule Castle Courtyard, which is actually south of Hyrule Castle if you go out the southern exit. You can find Agatha out here. I hate Agatha so much. I don't even want to talk about how annoying of a character she is. But if you go right over here to these three trees, there's actually a golden bug right there flying away. I don't know why Agatha couldn't get this one herself. She's kind of a bitch. Just saying. Actually, more than kind of. Are you kidding? Probably the biggest bitch in the Zelda universe, I'd say. There's also this Goron down here uh, who talks about this block path. You could take care of this a while ago. Uh, you could take care of this as soon as you do that Goron spring water side quest. And he's all like, hey, I need some hot spring water. So I guess we'll have to give him some spring water later on. Thought, might, thought I might have, uh, might as well talk to him since I'm right here. That one's really easy. It's near that big pillar in the flowers. The ladybug's just there, so there you go. This is another area we haven't touched very much. Upper Zora's River, where there's the uh, this whole canoe mini game and the fishing hole is actually up there that I haven't gone to at all. But I will do that later. Um, there's a golden bug flying over there. Don't try to use the claw shot. The claw shot was a stupid idea. Just use the Gale Boomerang. And there we go. We have another golden bug. Now in Zora's Domain, I think I've pointed this one out already. And, or passed by it quite a few times. It's right up here on the side. Flying around. Very easy to get. Golden bug. Alright. These are two of the most of the most difficult golden bugs to get. The only advice I can give is sort of the landmarks on how to get here. Uh, from the warp point, go to this area with all these pillars. And then go straight up. And eventually, I believe it's in the second little cat, little, uh, what am I looking for? A little valley thing here. You'll find the golden bug sort of flying around inside. That's an end. You'll find the golden bug flying around inside. You kind of have to get lucky. And this isn't a big area, so again, I would hu recommend hunting for this bug at night. But I found it all the same. Just flying around, flying around. And there we go. It's the day fly. Ha! Flying around during the day. It's not really that funny. But what is funny is how difficult this bug is to find unless you're lucky and just happen to spot it at night. Again, another one to just get at night. It's generally in this region of the Gerudo Desert. 
but again very very difficult to find i hate that one but before we can continue our golden bug quest i believe there's only one more pair left we actually do need to visit shod and take care of that whole skybook ordeal we don't need to but i might as well since something else i need to get requires that i do this hello shod take a look at this what's this skybook where in blazes did you get this he's actually one of the only characters in the zelda series i've noticed that uh i was gonna read the sky language that actually questions where link gets all these items I, i've noticed that people don't really question things it's like, where'd you get that massive spiked ball and chain? Nobody cares where you got it. <laughs> where'd you get this boomerang that has the power of tornadoes? Nobody cares. But he actually cares. So, uh, he reads the sky book. It seems like it does nothing. Because it didn't move that statue. Which is clearly a significant ancient statue. And he walks off. But little did Shad know that the little spell or little phrase that he read did actually do something. It actually restored power to the dominion rod we should probably show him this but i'm not gonna because i'm a greedy bastard i really don't understand why he doesn't know about this but hey that little spell helped restore power to the dominion rod so there we go that sort of uh kicks off the next part of the game where we have to find owl statues but that'll be in the next video i'm not gonna actually do all that now that is an annoying fetch, fetch quest though it seems like i unfortunately can't move that statue but it seems like an annoying fetch quest for this point of the game, but with the horse call and with the ability to warp around, it's actually not as bad as you can. So if we claw shot right up there, we can climb right out and continue our golden bug quest. These last two are in the sacred grove. There's the snails. There's one right here above this entrance. It's very easy to miss, but not that bad. And then the final sneaky bastard bug which you can't get, again, until clearing the Temple of Time, is, in fact, in the past. It's right in this little entryway with the music, which is awesome. And it's just chilling on the wall over here. Might as well grab that. And that's it. That's the last golden bug. We got them all. The reason I need to power up the Dominion Rod is behind these statues, there is actually something hidden. Hidden way back here is a chest. And inside said chest, there is a piece of art. How nice. And I just want to check what's behind the other statue. It's not a piece of heart, unfortunately. And it's really not that important, but it is a postal and it's free for the taking. So I might as well grab it, right? More free postals readily available right here. So there you go. Again, not going for 60 postals. You could, but the reward is kind of weird. But whatever, there's a postal. I'll take it to the bank. Now here is an annoying, annoying side quest, but not so annoying if you save all the golden bugs to do it once. What you have to do to this guy is you have to donate, I believe, a total of a thousand rupees to him. And unfortunately, you can only do it 50 rupees at a time, so you do have to talk to him 20 times to donate 50 rupees, which is annoying. But it works best if you do it in conjunction with the golden bugs, because Agatha does give you a lot of money for each golden bug that you find. So what you want to do, ideally, is donate the golden bugs, then take the money directly to this guy, then donate the bugs again, then take the money to this guy, and just repeat, 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 until you carry out his final heart, final uh, request. And you can see, you know, the word love is in red, so you can guess what the reward's going to be. But for those who can't figure it out, I uh, will leave it for a surprise. I don't know if there's anyone who's actually... You know, can't wait to see what you get from this guy. I can't wait, but whatever. And then you have you have this creep out here. I don't know what this is. Just this creepy person. He's just spying on Agatha through the window. That's so wrong and creepy. And Agatha's not even pretty. Like, she's just bitchy. Maybe he wants her money. That must be what it is. Oh, this is Agatha's castle. It's been a while since we've been here. Only went here to deliver the first golden bug because delivering one, you get a wallet upgrade. And you actually get the second wallet upgrade, second and last wallet upgrade in the game for delivering all of them. So it's two extremes. You deliver one and then you deliver 24. But whatever the case may be, I'm just going to drop them all off here because it's easy to do them all at once. I think. Now, when you deliver a pair of golden bugs, as you notice, the first one I donated was the ant and then i just donated the female ant uh you actually get 100 rupees but for every single that you give you actually get 50 rupees so it does add up over time 
quite a bit, and this is very long and annoying to watch. Uh, because it's just me talking to Agatha and then donating the money to the man, so I'm actually going to put this on some fast forward here. There we go, we're going to give the bug. <laughs> I feel like I have to talk fast now because all the, the footage isn't fast forward, but I don't. Uh, so it gets really annoying, really time consuming. I don't like the music. I don't like Agatha's voice. It's really annoying. I just, I don't like anything about this. I don't like bugs. I just, nothing. Nothing to do with this side quest, but uh, whatever the case may be, here are all the bugs. You get all the rupees. It's fantastic. Um, I would say definitely the toughest ones to find are the ones in Gerudo Desert, though. Those are the toughest bugs to find, but hey, we got them. So all, it's just a matter of repeatedly talking to Agatha over and over. It's kind of funny to hear this music all in fast motion, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once you, it's, I can't help but laugh. Uh, but once you actually get all the rupees uh, up to your wallet's capacity, you can actually run out and then donate them to this guy. And you just, again, rinse and repeat until he gives you your reward or, <clears throat> or Agatha runs out of bugs or something really stupid. <clears throat> Fortunately, uh, it's not like um, the dungeons where if you get a rupee from Agatha and you can't fit it in your wallet, it's like, oh, but it will refuse because you can't hold that many. No, you actually take it up to your wallet's capacity. So if you have like some odd number, you know, and you can't fit the full 50 rupees in, you could still fill it up to capacity. And look at that, 41 rupees remaining. I'm so glad I got that to be the, the number that gets kind of <laughs> shown on the screen there. That was fantastic. Or the, yeah, the number that gets shown every hundred rupees or so. It's great. It's great. It's great. I just had that multiple in there. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny to hear this part sped up. But it's great to hear this part sped up because I hate dealing with this. This is so annoying to just talk over and over. Why can't you just dump them all at once? I don't get it. Well, I mean, I get it because you're supposed to get 50 for a single, 100 for a pair. But it's annoying. It's annoying. But... Like I said, this is going to be the most annoying, or I, didn't, I don't think I actually said this, but this is going to feature some of the most annoying stuff in this game. After this video, we'll be getting back into cool stuff, back into adventuring, back into dungeons, back into really cool things. No more side quests for a while, so. And actually, we're kind of reaching the end of the game, if you couldn't tell. Uh, there's only one more mirror shard to find, and once we find that, we're pretty much golden, so. Ha, <laughs> golden. Golden bugs. Wow, didn't even intend for that. But, that's the idea. We're, we're pretty close to the end. This, there's really not that many more side quests to do. And the ones that are left really don't take very much time. This is by far the longest. But here's the last time we're going to talk to this guy. And once you donate 100 rupees, or 1,000 rupees, 1,000 rupees, not 100, uh, you get your prayers answered from the heavens or something like that. And that will actually complete another heart container. So that's pretty cool. Now, since I have some extra rupees to spend, I'm just essentially looking for any way to blow this cash. I'm going to buy some hot spring water and then give it to that Goron friend. Hello, Mr. Goron. Would you care for some hot spring water? Oh, you would. Yeah, you can have it. You can have it. Yes, what am I going to say? No. No. No, that's mine. It'll probably crush me if I said that. But now he's all energized. Goron power, go! <laughs> Goron's are so funny. But uh, he's going to roll into these rocks, and it'll take a little while to clear out. I think it takes a few day cycles for that those rocks to actually clear out. But it creates a nice, convenient shortcut, which is great. Now, if we talk to this woman, this is actually the fortune teller. I decided now would be a good time to show off the fortune teller while I'm doing a bunch of useless stuff. Like I said, you shouldn't really go anywhere else for you know how to progress in the game other than Telma's bar. But the fortune teller will give you another alternative too. Uh, you can choose either career or love for what she should look into. Career would be what to do next in the game, whereas love would be where to find a hidden heart piece. So you'll see both of those right now. And she's really annoying too. This fortune teller, annoying voice, I don't get it. She's just creepy. It's just creepy. <laughs> There's really no other word for it. But she sees. And actually, for a heart piece, it'll show you an image of where you're supposed to go to find the heart piece. It won't tell you anything else, but that is actually a heart piece I will be grabbing pretty soon. So there you go. It actually does work. It's a heart piece I haven't gotten yet. I remember I couldn't find that one for the life of me. Uh, back in my 
older file of this game. That was one of the ones that eluded me for so long because I was swimming around Lake Hylia. I was like, where the hell is this heart piece? Do I have to dive underwater? Who knows? Is it tucked away in some corner somewhere? But it's really not that hard to get once you know how. But we'll be going there later. Let's fast forward some more footage because it's funny. And we'll give the rest of these golden bugs. Hello. Oh, how cute. Another bug. Yay, yay. Here's a pear. Here's an orange ruby. I love how she just has all this money to give away, too. It's so pathetic. It's so stupid. But a great way to get money. Uh, another, I guess you could say, remember when I had to um, farm that snowboarding game to get rupees to afford the magic armor? This is another alternate way to actually fund that purchase is to, you know, do the golden bugs. And that would be pretty cool, too. That would be an easy way to get a lot of rupees. But you cannot get them all, like I said, until after clearing the Temple of Time. Or at least a until af after accessing the Temple of Time. Not You don't have to clear it, because the golden bug is right there. But it is a while into the game before you can actually clear this. But here is finally, finally, finally the last golden bug that we have to give Agatha, this stupid, whiny little girl. She's going to say... Oh boy, thank you so much. I'm so happy. This means all the bugs have made it to the ball. Yay! Because that's what we should be concerned about. Not the world ending, not the castle being surrounded by this big diamond aura thing. No, we should be concerned about bugs. But for all our troubles, we get the giant wallet, which actually holds up to 1,000 rupees. And that is the biggest wallet upgrade in the game. I'm done with this game for a little while. I need to take a break because these side quests were kind of annoying. This is Shadow Mario 41. Join us for some action next time.